Thank you very much and welcome back to Race Industry Week 2021 and our wonderful host Mr. Jeff Hammond is with us this morning. Good morning. morning. Jeff. Thank you for hosting this great webinar. I think we've got our three speakers and uh, we've got uh, Kai with us, right? So, uh, so Judy, do you want to say a few words about what Hotshot's working Well, it's them? just exciting to have Hotshot Lubricants on again with Kyle in his nice studio here. So this should be entertaining. Um, you have a great product range of um, items. So this is going to be entertaining and educational. So. Uh, absolutely. And, uh, and so we are actually for once a little bit ahead of schedule. And, uh, and so what we're going to do is, uh, you know, let uh, Jeff, uh, you know, carry on and uh, who does a magnificent job at hosting all our webinars and, uh, and it's not every day you get a three time, uh, you know, NASCAR crew chief champion to be hosting uh, your webinar. So thank you for being with us, Jeff, and uh, we're going to let you uh, uh, take over. Guys, you're in good right. hands. Have fun. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Francis and, and Judy. Gentlemen, how are we doing today? Doing good. Good. Glad to hear that. Uh, one of the reasons I got kind of excited about being or having the opportunity to uh, host this particular one is they said something about secrets. Is that is that the case there, Kyle? I mean, you, you guys are hot shots and yet you got a secret to go with it. <laughs> yeah, we got a few secrets around here. Uh, actually, we try we try to put our secrets out there though, so we're we're not the greatest magicians, if you will. No, I, I think that's wonderful. And again, just what little bit I've been able to, you know, get caught up on this deal. Um, number one, having a lot of diesel products here on my farm and and my trucks and my kids and everything like that. We always are trying to hop something up, and so I'm really interested about what I can learn that I can go back and tell them, hey, we can do this to some of this stuff. We can get, we may be able to get these things to run a little bit faster up down the highway, pull a load of hay. But gentlemen, to talk about the history of Hot Shots and the relationship that you three have, because I think that is a very intriguing relationship to say the least. Absolutely. Uh, I, or actually, all three of us are Ohio based. So that's really kind of what started us. And, and today we've got LaVon Miller from Firefunk Diesel and Drew Pumphrey from DJ Precision. Uh, and uh, I represent Hot Shot Secret here, and we we're a high performance lubricant company. So we do everything from additives, fuel and oil additives, to uh, full blown oils, engine, transmission, gear oil, um, any type of uh, high performance lubricant we usually have our hands on. So uh, our relationship kind of started with this whole group of uh, of us here with really some testing we were doing. Uh, about five years ago, we were not even into motorsports at the time. We were really kind of focused on our trucking side of the business. We came up to the diesel market. We got products for gas and diesel, but we really were known in the diesel side. And we had developed a new technology, uh, which we're going to talk about a little detail today with our nanocarbon technology and our FR3. And uh, we were looking for some testing and we got put onto this this fire pump diesel team, uh, this, this shop about an hour away from us that uh, turns out pretty good at what they do. And uh, we, we brought some of our products down there just to do some third party dyno testing to, to check on uh, horsepower gains. And that kind of introduced us to LeVon Miller with fire pump diesel. And uh, maybe he can come on and tell us a little bit about, about fire pump and how that started. Sure. Yeah, that was definitely a interesting scenario for us because we have an in-house chassis dyno and normally when guys call and want to use it, they bring in their equipment, they test it. Well, you know, we'll help make sure we run the dyno if, uh, correctly and give them the results. But when they showed up for testing, they showed up with product and they said, we want to pay you to test this product in your vehicles and you tell us the results. So it was definitely a unique strategy i like that because a lot of times when it comes to oils and additives everybody automatically goes into a snake oil type of a product that this is just smoke and mirrors and here we were able to do i was able to do a fair test myself and we immediately saw results and that was 
a quick way for me to start asking questions about what is this product that I can add a friction reducer to my oil in my 20,000 mile 2016 pickup and pick up horsepower. I mean, we were seeing 12 to 15 horsepower gains in the 500 horsepower range, which was unheard of to just put something in my oil. Um, so that definitely piqued interest because, you know, at the time we're racing with a 2000 horsepower diesel application. And I was like, well, you know, if we see these gains at 500 horsepower, surely there's benefits to run this in a high horsepower application. And that's what piqued our interest to say, what can we tie into hot shots to bring them into motorsports? And that really was the beginning of our interest in motorsports. Uh, after working with Levon there, he said, you know, you guys really should start developing some full-blown racing products after we're seeing the gains with just your oil additive. And uh, to bring Drew into this, at the time, uh, Firepump was already working with DJ on uh, some of the engines they use. And we had kind of met the met the limit of uh, the six, seven Cummins block. And uh, maybe Drew can speak to that and how he's tied into this uh, trio of relationships we got here. Yeah, I remember having a conversation with LeVon before you guys came for testing and same thing, like this is snake oil, whatever. There's no way this is gonna work. And LeVon calls and goes, you'll never believe that that hot shot secret oil additive actually made horsepower. We tested it on multiple trucks and made power. So we were like, wow, there's got to be, you know, advantages to being able to use at least that technology or those products and, and engines. So um, we, we kind of, we were at that stage. We were a little, I think, ahead of that stage when we actually broke the, the block and had the failures on the engines at high horsepower. So um, we ended up tearing up a significant amount of parts so it wasn't parts from a lubrication standpoint it was just over overloading the components or overloading the block for an extended period of time so once we got 100 passes or so on what uh block systems that we had at the point um they would catastrophically fail so um hot shots has been very good at keeping us on track and it's really not had to been a worry on the engine side at all on lubrication side i mean We've had times when engines have gone down to 20 PSI of oil pressure uh, through the 60 foot and just keep running it. We don't have any issues, not putting any metal in the filter, run it. And I mean, most people would, wouldn't even think about that. And Hot Shots was definitely there to protect us through that kind of stuff. When I, you know, you, you made me have uh, a curious moment because I know reading my information, you know, you guys have had some 3,200 horsepower engines on dynos. So when you have a failure with that kind of horsepower, um, I want to be two buildings over before <laughs> the building. I feel good enough that the parts are not going to catch up with me. So, I mean, it's it's got to be unnerving because I know what it feels like around 750 to 900 horsepower when something comes a knot. But in that case right there, it just, to me, it just it's got to be mind-blowing. And it's got to be encouraging. And going back to what LeVon pointed out, was that you just poured something in the engine and all of a sudden we got, boom, instant horsepower. Normally we're having to, you know, change rods and or heads or, you know, you know what I'm saying? You got to do more than one thing to make it happen. Um, that to me just sounds, it does. It sounds like a secret that everybody needs to understand because, Man, that's that is mind blowing. Thirty two hundred horsepower in the engine, and I know you don't do every day um, that kind of horsepower on every engine you comes in the door. I mean, I know you got a lot of normal stuff, but the result and where you how you get to there has got to be very similar. You know, the process has got to be similar. And and Kyle, you know, can you can you share a little bit with, of love about you know what makes your product so good because when, when you get to talking to guys who work in machine shops, when you when you can lubricate something, and LeVon can understand that, we can tight, tighten up tolerances. That allows us to do a lot more and, and build that into reliability as well as horsepower. So wh where does it begin, and, and, and how, do we, how do we complement the three? You, how did it complement the three elements that came together, the lubricant, the, the, the ability to build something, 
and at the same time understand the machining part of it that goes all into play? Great question. Uh, tough answer. <laughs> the it, it, it takes a lot of time and energy and partnership with with guys like Drew and Levon. Uh, you know what, what we're doing in diesel drag racing right now is so far past the line of uh, uh, of what anybody's done before. So you don't have a lot of resources out there that you can refer to and say, hey, how does this work? You know, we're kind of in just blue ocean out there. Uh, figuring it out as we go. And we're fortunate to partner with people like Firepunk and D&J that are willing to go into that darkness with us and, and, and get it figured out. Uh, to answer your question on uh, how, how, the product, how the product really works is, well, one thing I want to address first is a lot of people look at lubricants like they haven't changed in 50 years. And mm -hmm. we all know that in this racing industry, everybody's looking for an advantage anywhere they can get it. Um, we see it in hard parts all the time. You know, there's a new turbo out, there's new setup on a new suspension, you know, and so forth. Everyone's looking for the new, newest, latest. But I think lubricant side of the, the, the industry often gets overlooked. Whereas that's where Hot Shot Secret really has planted itself. We're always trying to push on the cutting edge of lubric lubricant technology. And there are new chemicals coming to market all the time. We stay on top of it. We bring them in the lab. We are constantly testing. Matter of fact, our testing machines run 24 seven here. So we have testing going on all the time. Uh, we are not scared to update a product if we find new technology. And we're always kind of looking for the next best thing. Mm -hmm. The, our, our, our greatest find in the past few years has really started this, this new technology is a carbon nanotechnology. And a lot of people have heard of nanotechnology. Uh, we use a carbon based and it's very challenging in the lubricant market. There have been quite a few companies out there that are playing in this space, but one of the first challenges with nanocarbons is keeping it in solution. And that goes for anything. When you're building a really high end race oil, we're infusing this with, uh, you know, antimony and calcium and, and a lot of, you know, high end group five esters to really build a robust package to protect these high end investments. Well, you can't just go to the chemical store, buy all the best stuff and pour it in a bucket and, and, and have a great oil. Uh, you really got to get all the ingredients to cooperate with themselves. We know that there's huge gains to be found in nanotechnology, but the hurdle has been getting them to blend and stay in solution. Nanocarbons always want to fall out of solution and sit at the bottom of the bottle or the bottom of the engine. It's not doing any good down there. Uh, what we've done is we've patented a technology to keep it in solution. And that's why we've taken this new technology and run with it. My, I am not a tribologist. We have quite a few tribologists on staff. I'm pretty good at dumbing it down for the average guys, what I try to do. So if I uh, if I go past you, stop me and ask me ask me a question. No problem at all. But I'll try you, you ain't got to worry about that because out of the three out of the, the guys that are on the screen with us, I'm the yeah. dumbest. Okay, so I'm always going to ask the dumbest question. Okay, so you got no worry here. Bring, bring it on, bring it on. Um, right. Well, actually, I think we have a we have a video. Uh, I I think we can roll the video number one here. It's going to talk a little bit about the FR three, and then I'll speak over it once it gets rolling. Hot Shot Secret FR3 Friction Reducer is a one-of-a-kind friction reducer and 100% synthetic oil treatment engineered to greatly improve the properties of any conventional or synthetic oil, giving your engine and other systems an increase in performance, protection, and longevity. The high temperatures and pressures inside an engine will cause the oil to break down, leading to deposits, excessive wear, and premature failure. FR3 Friction Reducer combats these issues by improving the host oil's oxidation, thermal, and shear stability properties by using three patented lubricants, including a nano lubricant. FR3 Friction Reducer is scientifically proven to reduce engine wear up to 43%, increase horsepower and fuel economy up to 5%, reduce oil operating temperatures, and increase oil film strength. Protect your engine with FR3 Friction Reducer. Hot Shot Secret. Powered by science. So I'm going to let this play on a little bit. That's just kind of an overview of uh, this FR3 product that we have. 
Uh, one little video that's coming up here first is going to show one of our testing we did. This is with another carbon uh, nanotechnology on the market. And this is a six hour time lapse. And as you can see, our product is on the left side of your screen there. You can actually visually see under a time lapse the nanoparticles fall out of solution there as they drop down very slowly. So this is, uh, this is what we've seen in the nano market uh, to date. And this is why when we've figured out how to keep it in solution, we've taken this technology and, and run with it. The, uh, the ability to keep it in solution allows that to run throughout the engine, um, find all the hot spots. The way that it actually works is through polarity. It is a charged uh, additive. So it can be added to any oil. We have this additive in every single one of our racing oils, our line of adrenaline racing oil. Uh, we have there from a 20 weight all the way up to an alcohol 60 weight. And the you spoke earlier about how some of these new engines have tighter tolerances. We know that um, the engines are being built differently than they used to be. Well, with the tight tolerance comes what we call hot spots. So not only is the nanocarbons in this technology attracted to metal because they're polarized, they're also attracted to heat. So the tightest of tolerances inside the engine where it finds the most heat is gonna attract the nanocarbons. What those nanocarbons do, they're basically very, very, very small, tiny little uh, nanoballs. Uh, they're, they're spherical in shape and they're a nano, particle would be about, if you could cut a human hair, I think that's the end of our video there. If you could cut a human hair in 40, there's gonna be your nanoparticles. So uh, they're very small. You could actually fit one inside a human cell. Well, these travel throughout the oil, find all of the, all of the voids in the metal inside of an engine. So whether it's a brand new machine build coming out of Drew's, you know, DNJ's, engine new build, you're going to have machining marks in it. Uh, if it's an older engine that's got, got some passes on it, already has some wear, you're going to have some wear marks on it. Uh, the nanocarbons are going to find those voids and also where all the tight tolerances are. They will fill those voids to give us a flat film layer and that's where our nano lubricant goes on top to uh, prevent wear. So at the end of the day, people love to see this horsepower game and that's something that's flashy and people love to see that you can actually gain horsepower with the pour in oil additive. But truthfully, what we're doing is we're reducing the friction and the wear of the engine, allowing it to make horsepower. It, we are not inventing horsepower. We are freeing up that engine to produce the horsepower is made to make. And the, what you're seeing is a result of the anti-wear and the production of uh, horsepower is the result of that. That to me, I find interesting. You don't really create horsepower, but you unlock the horsepower that's there by giving it. Um, I'm just going to use the word freer. It makes it, it makes it freer. It takes some the, whatever resistance is already there and just basically frees it up. Correct. That is 100 percent correct. Unlock is okay. a good word. I'm going to start using that. We unlock the horsepower. Okay. <laughs> And then the other, you, you, yeah, and I'll send you my bill. Uh, the uh, the other part of it, you know, is I was looking at all the, the products that were being shown in that first uh, video clip. And, you know, the FR3 friction reducer added, you know, it's not, you know, you've got other oils besides just the stuff that has nanoparticles in it. You can buy something with, with, uh, with lesser, or I, would you say, an alternative ingredients, correct? Sure, absolutely. And when we originally released the FR3, which has been um, four or five years now, I believe, uh, when we mm -hmm. first did that testing with Levon down at, at Firepunk, uh, at the time we didn't even have the racing oil selection we have now. Um, we have a full line of our adrenaline line runs uh, engine oils. We have three different types of racing transmission fluids, uh, three different weights of gear oil, five different weights of engine oil. Every one of our oils that we release we infuse with our FR3. We, we feel that strongly about it. Now, we also know people are very oil loyal. That's what I like to say. So right. if you like your oil and you're happy with your oil, I suggest you try our FR3 additive on the side. 
you can, you can add that to any oil. Not only can you add it to any oil, it's also great in power steering pumps. Um, it's great in differentials for your farm equipment. Uh, we put it in, in pretty much anything that's oil-based. Uh, we can see gains out of using the nanocarbon technology with. Okay, LeVon, let me ask you a question. You're one of the guys who gets to do the testing with all this new, you know, new stuff, you know, we keep hearing about on the dyno. But what kind of real world results have you had because of this product? Well, real world, uh, we see a lot better results when the engine, the race engines get torn down after a season of abuse. Um, mm -hmm. The wear patterns in the bearings and even in the rings, holding the uh, oil film on the cylinder wall. So there's less wear on the piston skirts. So real world really comes after a whole season of racing, you tear the engine down in comparison to previously before we ran the FR3 product or the Hot Shots oils, um, we were seeing a significant reduction. Like I know they scientifically say there's 43% uh, less wear um, I don't mathematically equate that to passes necessarily, but last year on our drag truck that makes over 3000 horsepower, we went 99 passes. And when we pulled the engine down, you could still see the dial bore gauge marks on the bearings from when the engine was assembled. And that was after, you know, you're getting 3000 horsepower and 3,500 mm -hmm. plus foot pounds of torque getting run through those bearings, you know, a hundred times throughout a season and that's real world results. Yeah, I'd say so. Uh, do you, I believe, you know, I'm sitting here looking at some of the stuff here. Don't you have a, a video of this right here as far as, you know, some of the results and, and with your, your product yeah, I and believe, everything? Uh, your... Through a DNJ and Kyle, one of you guys, you took a video when we tore the engine down after the first season. I don't know. Is that the video I'm, you were talking about? The one I'm looking at, I'm looking for the video shows the S10 racing and the world records you guys set this yeah. year. You know, oh, that's, yeah. that's pretty wild. And, and I'd like to see those because anytime you can tell me you're making world records, you, you're abusing something. Okay. Right. Well, and when you take something apart and you tell me, Oh, it looked like it was brand new. <laughs> I mean, Honestly, Drew, would you believe that, you know, being a, a machinist and like that, that you don't see, you know, it looks like it just can't put together? No, I really wouldn't believe, to believe it. If we didn't see it ourselves. That's my um, point. I know a lot of people are going to be like, there's no way Hot Shots is paying these guys to say this and so on. But <laughs> if anybody knows us, knows us, they know that that's not going to happen. I mean, we've really thoroughly been impressed and it's, it's, uh, I don't even know much about oil because I haven't had to learn it. We've had good people in our corner that it's not, if we have a problem, it's a problem because we screwed up or we're just overloading the part. It's not a lubrication issue. And it's been great to have that security. And um, I know people aren't going to believe, you know, what we're saying, but we pretty much just say, well, get a bottle of FR3 and dump it in. If you've got a dyno at home and it's actually accurate and it's not just throwing numbers out, it will show you a result. It does every single time. And uh, when you can kind of just free up, it's just like that. You free up the horsepower, you're reducing friction on everything. Everything mm -hmm. survives better. I think the biggest thing that we have seen, our Cummins engines aren't typically an uh, engine that we have a whole lot of bearing issues with. They have a lot of bearing surface area, so that's been a pretty easy thing for us. But what we have fought is piston rings and uh, keeping piston rings alive. And most of what that is, is the oil film that stays on the cylinder wall that keeps everything there surviving. We're, we're starting to deal, I and mean, the engine that's making 3,000 horsepower and make 99 passes is making the same brake mean effective pressures as like a top fuel car. And they're tearing them down every four seconds. So, I mean, we're really making that much cylinder pressure. Um, and the stuff survives. Uh, some of it's the components and some of it's the partnership and a lot of it's the tuning also. If that stuff all doesn't go together, it's nothing but a bomb. But uh, yeah. everyone has to work together. And, and well, that's great to hear. Do we, do we have that the video so we can, you know, marvel at the, uh, at the passes?
Yeah, I think LeVon can probably speak to this. This is when we uh, set the world record. I don't think we had any audio, um, but LeVon, if you want to kind of walk through that day and uh, what we did this year. Yeah, this was down at South Georgia Motorsports Park this spring. Uh, we were radial tire racing, and that is when you're racing diesels, you're out on your own. So we were changing uh, torque converter stall speeds, trying to make the uh, drive shaft curve look the way we want it to. And and we finally got the thing dialed in and working the way we want it to. And we were able to click off that magical three second pass, went 399.8 this to, uh, at this event. And that's something that somebody, you know, in the diesel world, we have been chasing that number for three years, trying to get a diesel powered vehicle of any kind into the threes. Um, but diesel motorsports is advancing quickly. Um, you know, there, whereas the gas guys, they're advancing, but they're, they're still ahead of us by a good margin. Um, but what's exciting about the diesel motorsports is we're still breaking new boundaries and ad making advancements every year to go faster. Well, I, I add to that, it's not just advancements. I know um, in the gas world, we see it by thousands of a second. Um, this year alone, I, what was the, the best coming into the year was in the 420s? 411 at 181. Or at, the, at the end of the year, down in South Georgia, hit 411. Then we came back. Um, we've had some dragsters in the low fours, four zeros. And uh, but for Firepunk to pull this off on a door car uh, to be the first diesel powered vehicle to crack into the threes, uh, it wasn't much with 399.8, but we'll take it, yep. you know. So uh, I, you just don't hear in any other drag racing, uh, you know, leaps of tenths of seconds, you know, per season. It's uh, it's go, it goes to show how much the technology on the diesel side of things have really come into play. And it goes goes into, like I said earlier, uh, teaming up with guys like Drew and LeVon, uh, this engine that Drew built, this executioner built engine is just something else. And and we come in and we stay in our lane um, with the lubrication side of things and, and, and try to bring our expertise to the table. Uh, and then obviously you've got Firepunk Diesel with their race team that knows how to get it done when it comes to race day. and and that's not that's not it too. There's there's a bunch of partners on this truck to to get to where it's got, and it really does take a village. Well, I mean, from my perspective, seeing something like that, it's it's uh, definitely teamwork, and it's all of you guys willing to buy in on unlocking this horsepower because it's you know it's a uh, it's it's almost like it's mystifying, Kyle, because I'm yeah you know, I'm old school, just like probably these guys are too. You know, seeing is believing, but you you if you're smart in this world, you got to understand why too. I mean, you've got to be able to understand, you know, what is making the difference here, so we can better understand what we can do to totally take advantage of. It. I mean, what are the areas? I mean, just because we all of a sudden we tripped over, you know, some lubricating horsepower, is there more? Because, you know, you're chasing a dream and trying to break the threes. And like you said, you know, you just barely got in there. Well, now that you're there, you want to stay there. You know, you want to you want to go. You want to do more. You know, you want to you know, it's always and I'm going to go back to another. I, I had an opportunity to um, talk with Don Garlitz earlier this year on, on one of the seminars that we did. And, you know, he's messing around with electric cars, electric drag cars and things. And. and what he's pursuing is a totally different uh, source, but it's it's the same thing. I mean, it's you know they're trying to get to the where the the line has been drawn, and and to go over that barrier, it's got to be I guarantee gratifying. But you guys ain't gonna throw your hands up and say, "Well, we're done." You know, nobody's gonna ever touch that. No, you're going to figure out some way to raise that bar to, you know, when next pass will be a three, nine, zero, 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 you know what I'm saying? And oh, I, that to me is what inspires me, you know, watching and talking to you guys so far is that it's almost like you're all on a quest together and you're making things happen. You know, that's, that's well put. And, and I'll go back to what we started the conversation with when uh, we were just doing some FR3 testing uh, with LeVon down there at Firepunk. I had never 
I never really foresaw where that was going to lead to. And, and what it did was we, it validated we had a great product. Uh, we had already done enough testing on it. We knew it. We wanted third party results um, to give us the, the, the proof and the data to make the marketing claims and to get the product out there. It was then Firepunk who really pushed on us and said, well, you've got something special here that, you know, we can add to any of the racing oils they were currently using at the time. Um, and, but then they questioned us and they said, well, if you can do this just with an additive, that's a 5% dosage of that oil, and you can make a brand name, you know, high end racing oil that they're already using that much better to pick horsepower up. Well, what was left on the table when they de developed that oil? And we said, we don't know, but we're going to find out. And so that gave us the motivation to then go develop the adrenaline racing oil. Uh, after that, the next year, they said, well, this is working great. We need some transmission fluid and gear oil. That was year two, three. And so we slowly developed these products. And in developing them, we took them back to the same principles that we do here at Hot Shot Seeker. We, we always will only develop products that we can prove with science are the best available. Um, we don't really make any commodity style products. You're never going to find us making, um, you know, brake fluid or something like that. If it's a, if it's a lubrication product that we can make a gain on and actually show scientifically, then we're going to take on that challenge. Now, sometimes does that lead to a dead end? It sure does. We've got a lot of dead, uh, prototypes in our, in bottles in our lab that we've, uh, swung and missed, but, um, I'm sure Drew's got some designs that he's thrown away on some of the engines he's built, but it takes that dedication to keep pushing if you really want this. And what helps you what helps you along that path is teaming up with with guys like like Drew and Levon because we're all we're all in it to advance the industry. So when that was put, put back on us and they said you guys should really make an engine oil, a racing oil, what was unique about it was we were able to start fresh. We weren't a racing oil company. We weren't even in racing. So we got to take a very outside of the box, unique view at what makes a racing oil. And we got to start with the ground up buildup. So not only does our racing oil have tremendous properties from the carbon nanotechnology, the FR3 that's infused into it, we also designed it differently than any other racing oil out there. Uh, to give you a couple specs on it, one would be that we use a pure group four polyalpha olefin, a PAO oil. Uh, not 5%, not 4%, not 9%. It's 100% pure group four oil. Um, that's a whole other long discussion, but in short, a group four is one grade above a group three synthetic. So when you think right. about a group two conventional and a group three synthetic, usually people are using group fours as like um, additives and esters or high end. We're, we're actually using that as the base oil. The advantage of using a group four PAO is that this oil cannot shear. So if the Firepunk S10 uh, truck, the world record truck, it runs our 50 weight racing oil. No matter how many passes, no matter what they do to that oil, um, all the oil analysis we do on the back end, it will always sit at 50 weight. So as we know in the racing world, shearing the oil, having it come out of grade, when your 50 weight drops to a 44, drops to a 42 after a few passes on a hard load, you're no longer protecting your tolerances. It's designed for a certain weight of oil. So when we designed this oil, we were actually using that technology in a whole different application. It was actually made for over the road trucking for trucks that go extreme intervals, 100,000, 200,000 mile intervals without changing the oil, which is a whole other conversation another day using bypass filters and, and, and whatnot. But that technology of taking the shear stability of the oil and making it paramount so that it always stays in grade, we just sat there and said, well, why isn't the racing industry using this? It's right there for the taking. Now, it's expensive. I mean, there's no way around that. But it's if, if you're tasked with making the best of the best, which is what our lab was tasked with, they said, well, obviously, we're going to go with the pure group four. That way, all of our racers know they will always be in grade. Catastrophic engine failure situations that, that that's going to stay right at a 50 weight or a 40 weight, whatever weight they started with. So that was the base oil started with. Then we brought in our FR3, which was kind of what started this whole thing. We added our nanocarbon technology to it. And then we were looking at the additive package, which 
most commonly what you see in the racing world, you see high zinc packages. People always hear about how much zinc's in your oil. Uh, we use a, a sulfur-based zinc as opposed to uh, what's commonly known as ZDDP. It's a phosphorus-based zinc uh, that you see in most oils. Uh, the sulfur-based zinc, it stinks. <laughs> so our, our oil has a unique smell, but that's from the sulfur in it. But it acts, it's, it, it's a great lubricant, which br brings the wear down considerably. And then we jack that level up to insane amounts. I think we run about 32, 3,400 parts per million zinc, uh, sulfur-based zinc. So what you don't see in our oil is a lot of phosphorus, which a lot of people usually see a high phosphorus level in the racing oil, but that's because they're using a, a lesser type of zinc, a ZDDP, a phosphorus-based zinc. Uh, in place of that, we keep a calcium package around 2,000 parts per million. And what you'd love to call one of our secrets, but again, we put it out there, so it's not a secret. We, we blend about 1,000 parts per million of antimony into our racing oils. Antimony is probably the most expensive chemical for oil engineering. Um, it is a great anti-wear. It combines with zinc extremely well, but it is insanely expensive. So I think I know of, we test everything on the market. I think we've seen Antimony and a couple of their competitors' brands, but they're in the five to 10 parts per million. We're using a thousand parts per million in every bottle of ours. So uh, to get back to what, what you were saying, it, it really was the drive that created this whole push. And that launched us into motorsports when we were unknown. And just in three or four years now, uh, we, we, we started with diesel drag racing, just kind of it was close to our family, close to what we knew. And we, we've now pretty much taken over that whole diesel drag racing industry. Now, our, one of our, uh, our Outlaw Diesel Super Series, which is our big diesel drag racing series, we are proud to announce this year, uh, there are seven classes, everything from pro dragsters, pro mods, pro street, all the way up to ET bracket. All seven class champions this year was, were running Hot Shot Secret Racing Oil. So inside our world, that word had got out, you know, so each of these top teams right. had slowly kind of come over and said, wow, we've been using something for a long time. Either I haven't really seen problems or we're looking around, but what do you guys have going on over here? And that's why it's great to partner with somebody like Drew, who's got this prototype engine that's never, you know, one of a kind engine and trust us enough to put our new lubricant in there. And then you have a team like Firepunk that we love because we can give them stuff. They go thrash on it and give us, you know, the test results and collectively we all gain. And then at the end of the day, we start breaking world records like this and the whole sport gains. So it's really a win all around when you have some people like these companies that we're partnered with that really want to uh, take something to the next level and have that drive and ambition to do so. Okay, well, the thing is, Drew, you've been sitting there with just that little, uh, like, you know, waiting for the for the moment to come. You know, we've heard from everybody else as far as the race team's perspective. What about your experience trusting, you know, this prototype technology, this, this carbon nanotechnology that is that we're discussing here today? Um, what did it take to convince you? And at the same time, I know you've got a video from, I think, from your shop of you guys tearing down the engine and what you found and, and you know give us a i mean pretty pretty much that's that's the proof in the pudding i mean you know you're the guy that put it together and when you saw what was left or what you found when you do your autopsy were you surprised yeah uh, jeff you can go ahead and uh, roll that video for drew it's uh, he can speak over it yeah we were surprised um in Pleasantly surprised with how well the engine survived after all of that abuse, for sure. Um, and that's the, the crankshaft there. You can see there's nothing going on there. I wish it was better video quality on the bores on that engine, but they're still cross-hatching the bores after that kind of uh, abuse, 99 runs. So um, that's been our biggest wear item is the cylinder walls and the piston rings. Uh, sealing the combustion gases and that's where I think the lubricant is the is the biggest advantage so um bearing wise I mean we we really could could virtually see nowhere on the bearings and everyone I'm sure <laughs> doesn't believe that but 
um, virtually nowhere on the bearings at all. Um, I think we've got pictures of them. I don't know if they're in this uh, video or not. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the oil has always done us really, really well. Hot shots, um, like I said, they've been a partner with us and we really haven't had to learn anything about oils. So it's just been able to give them, well, there you can see some of the crosshatch still in the bores a little bit in that shot there. Uh, that's a rod bearing on the load side. Um, that's just no coating either. That's just a regular uh, mall cleavite H bearing with uh, no, virtually no wear. A little bit of dirt and debris through that one, but uh, for the most part, uh, that's a main bearing on the load side. And this is as we tore it down after 99 passes. That's all the load side of the main bearings too in our bed plate setup. Top side of the bearing. You can see the, the scratches are still the marks from the uh, dial bore gauge from when we put it, everything together. Kind of look like a little scratch on the coating basically. It's, you can't even feel it, right. it's shine it up. Piston ring still out of bull nose. That's after Levon's doesn't do what he's supposed to do for EGTs. <laughs> hey, heat makes horsepower. That's right. We go fast, we turn it up. Ask for forgiveness later. Yep. You never ask for permission. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what, what makes the team work. So, um, but yeah, like I said, I mean, we've had years in the past where we had an oil system issue. Um, it wasn't really an issue so per se as we just put the tank in the back of the truck trying to get weight distribution right mm -hmm. as a dry sump okay. setup. Well, the G forces would pull on that column of oil that's on the suck side of the oil system all the way from the back of the vehicle. And we would mm -hmm. drop oil pressure as soon as the car was under even one G. Um, and as we got faster and faster, it got worse and worse. And I remember us being at a race and we were seeing oil pressures through the 60 foot dropping down below, below 20 pounds. And we just kept watching filters and never, ever had an issue. I don't think we ever even pulled that engine apart. Did we, Levon? I don't think I so. Think we just kept running. it. Um, so most people would be, would be just going, there's no way, but we really saw no wear. We never really saw no issues. So we never even tore it down to inspect. And I know that's a lot of the, the oils that's that's doing that and i think kyle talked he dummied down their pao oil once for me and described it as different sized balls basically is that how you describe that kyle <laughs> yeah talking about the molecular structure yeah so See, i can even teach you dummied that them. down and said it doesn't shear out a grade well okay cool why doesn't it shear out shear out a grade we were at a virginia race how did that work I remember that was during a rain delay. Yeah. Drew, teach me about oil. <laughs> yeah. How, so, so why, why is the, what was that? Um... So in short, what, the reason why we have the ability to make the oil unshearable is because it's a true synthetic oil. Uh, what most people, if you go to the average auto parts store and you look at the shelf up there, on all of those millions of bottles of oil and all your options, all that oil up there says synthetic is not tr a true synthetic. It's actually a group three, which means it's just a more highly refined base oil. Uh, simply a conventional is just not as refined as much. So uh, we're looking at the carbon chains of the actual uh, base oil itself, the molecular structure of that oil. And when you're looking at a group two conventional, you're not far from a barrel of crude, you know, it's just very loosely refined. So the, the structure of the oil under a microscope is very abstract. You had small particles, big particles. Um, uh, it's very ununiform, if you will. That's just because it hasn't been hydro cracked that much and it, it hasn't been refined too much. We put that through another process of refining, um, more hydro cracking and get that to a more consistent molecular structure. And that's what they call a group three, what the world calls a synthetic. 
Uh, we even do here on our bottles because people get confused by that. But again, it's just more highly refined. What you'll see in that is that instead of having large size and small size and medium size, you're just kind of down to a small and medium size particle in that. That's less area to break off. And when you break that carbon chain is when you're shearing the oil. So when it's coming out of grade. So if it's a 50 weight racing oil, um, say it's conventional oil, it's got a very loose carbon chain to it and it can shear out of grade pretty quickly. Um, especially on a racing oil, they can do it in one pass. We've seen oil drop from a 50 weight to a 40 weight in one pass under a 4,000 horsepower load. Uh, so you got one pass of protection out of there. And that upgrades to a group three and uh, it's a lot more similar carbon chain. So it's, it's a lot stronger and gives you more shear stability. So it will not break as easy. Uh, there's not enough loose points on that carbon chain to break and actually come out of grade. So it gives you more a longer interval, gives you more passes while you have that protection of staying in grade. But it eventually will break and wear down. Where the group four PAO is just light years difference is it is an actual true synthetic. We actually bring this down to the molecular side. We break the entire carbon chain down to pieces. It's like taking a thousand piece puzzle and instead of like being finished and trying to perfect it, we just dumped it on the table, all the pieces, and then we build the oil from the ground up. Now we've truly synthesized the oil. You have a true synthetic oil. In doing that, when we have, when we have tribologists in our lab that have full control over how that oil is built, well, now we can actually replicate that carbon chain so it is like a copying machine. It is 1,000% identical all the way down uh, the chain. That makes it very difficult to break, um, virtually impossible to break. And that's why a PAO oil can withstand either long miles on uh, like an over the road trucker that's going ex extreme intervals or those short eighth mile and quarter mile passes made by three, 4,000 horsepower vehicles are putting the same strain on the oil. But if we have that group four true synthetic uh, base oil chain in there that can't be broken, it's gonna hold great. And uh, these guys, these race teams, these engine builders, they just don't have to worry about that element at all uh, because the oil is going to stay in great. Now, here's the challenge, too. It's kind of, a, it's kind of a, a, a bad reward for building such a good oil. What's unique about uh, the additive package that we then add, including our carbon nanotechnology, when you have a group two, like a conventional oil, because it's so ununiform and the molecular structure is so different along the chain there's a ton of places where we can go in there and i i, I kind of speak to it it's like decorating a christmas tree we hang little additives over that carbon chain on that tree of oil uh well there's a bunch of them on, on a on a conventional oil because it's so abstract you get to a group three there's less of them less areas to get your additive package to actually get in there and hold well, one of the reasons why people don't build a pure group four oil is because it is so consistent and we build it, we're actually building it to be identical chain. It also leaves us like nowhere to plant these additives. And that becomes very challenging. Um, that would be something that I do have to keep a secret in house of how we do that, because uh, that's also what's unique. I could give, I could give any of the lubricant companies in the nation, like our recipe, and and our ingredients um, they're all out there but how we blend it and how we get it to stay in solution and hold the out of the package and how the nanotechnology stays in solution uh is is really what the feather in our cap is and that's why we've been able to take this technology and really advance it in the industry okay kyle we got just a few minutes left i want to make sure that our audience has any questions to jump in there real quick we've already got a comment and a question from jason are the product additives, the O2 and other and additives, O2 and other sensor and filter friendly? I mean, you have any issues with anything that, uh, as far as that's concerned? And at the same time, Nick wanted to make sure everybody understood, Hot Shot Secret is amazing. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. So, Appreciate that. Uh, to answer your question, uh, yeah, there, there's you wouldn't have to worry about any type of uh, O2 sensors when we're speaking about 
the FR3 additive itself, the carbon nanotechnology, mm -hmm. this can be added to any oil, um, gas, diesel, lawnmower, string trimmer, motorcycle, boat, you name it. Any oil this can be added to, even two-stroke oil, where you run into issues on application is when we get into, uh, like say the racing oil. Now you would not want to put a racing oil in a vehicle that has a emission system model. Um, just because the zinc package is so high in this that even if you put this in a, a diesel, it would not be friendly to the DPF. And in a gas car, it would not be friendly to the catalytic converter. It would prematurely clog those components. Um, great anti-wear just... engine, but it's uh, difficult on the, uh, the emission system. So don't put a racing oil in a non-racing car, but if you want the technology, you can use the FR3 in any passenger vehicle. But that okay. has... The, the blue diamond is, the black diamond is the race. I have blue diamond oil in my daily driver 2019 truck with an emission system. And I've had that same oil in there for 34,000 miles now with a uh, particulate filler with a France oil bypass filter to keep, keep the oil clean. Yeah, Hot Shots have okay. other, other oils than the adrenaline to, to cover all those bases for people. All right, and some closing questions here that I want to try to get to real quick. Uh, Levon, for example, you set uh, a world record during the lights out race at South Georgia Motorsports Park. Obviously, that's a field that normally is dominated by the uh, gas guys. Do you think that you're on the verge of being able to compete against gas racing equipment? Yeah, we touched on this a little bit earlier, but we're making leaps and bounds improvements. I definitely think that we are like, we're actually able to go to some of these events, some of the no prep stuff that we've raced and compete and win rounds. So yes, we're getting there. Um, we're not there today, but uh, hopefully next year or the year following, we'll be right there running with them. How about you, Drew? You feel the same way that, you know, being a high performance diesel engine builder that you're closing the gap against your gas competitors? Yeah, I think if we had the equipment and resources that some of the other race teams have, uh, some of these guys, like if they knew how much money we really had in this compared to a lot of these other race teams, they would be going, you got to be kidding me. And, uh, you know, better chassis. I mean, that what, but how old's that S10 chassis? What was that? That was an old Yeah, it, it was built in 2000 originally, so... That's the next step is getting in a new chassis, but again, more money. So right. uh, it's teaming up and being patient and waiting for the time to, to make the next move. Right. Well, guys, usually when we see these other folks like Francis and Judy join us, is it means time has expired. That's her polite way of saying it's time for us to uh, quit talking and start uh, making room for somebody else to come in. But Kyle, this has been totally uh, fun for me because you're together. I like it when you see people do something that's normally against the grain, and that's what you're doing here, going into a normally gas, you know, nitro burning type world, and you're saying, hey, we can make diesel power, you know, take, make you guys take notice and the way you come together as a, as a, I guess you might say as a team, and you're sharing information and you're making, you're making headway. And I think that's just awesome. World records are what they are they're made they're made to be broken and set and you guys are doing it so congratulations thank you appreciate it jeff thank you the concept for e-part trade is basically in my opinion there's a big hole in the internet so the internet started many years ago but there's never been an online business community for racers on the World Wide Web. The need for e-part trade is actually quite obvious. Basically, people in the business of auto racing need a place online to hang out and get their problems solved. It's extremely simple for a buyer or for a supplier to interact on the platform. The first thing you need to do is sign in, which is free. And the second thing is, when you see a product that you're interested in, all you need to do is click on request more information. If it's a company, you click on request more information. And then from there, it is forwarded directly to the buyer or to the supplier. You can go to epartrade.com, you 
become part of a community of businesses in racing and it makes uh, sourcing products much easier than just on the internet or using Google. At ePartrade, there is no e-commerce. It's literally a connection just like at a trade show. So now, any time of the year, a buyer could reach out to a supplier through an email. More than that, it's a place to go just to keep current every day. So it's a good place to start your work day in your racing business or in your offices of your professional race team. And you know you're current when it comes to new technology, industry news, technical papers, technical videos, all of that and more. We're not looking for a million hits per day. All we want is people who are really the volume buyers of racing products in the racing industry to be part of the little world of ePart Trade. We have racing businesses participating from around the world. So you get suppliers from around the world, you get buyers from around the world. ePart Trade really eliminates having to travel, closing down your shop. Now you have a place to showcase globally your racing product and technology. There are two types of people, racers and everyone else. Racer Magazine is for those who believe that racing is a way of life. Racer embodies the excellence that defines a sport driven by passion, courage, and ingenuity. Get one year of both Racer's print and digital edition for only $39 with instant access to our entire digital issue archive. Subscribe now at info.racer.com.